In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the one and only God. Amen. The second lecture will be titled How to Witness. Uh, it's more or less um, like a summary of the previous one and some points to add, but it's like the technique, how to witness technically. Um, again, we are reviewing some ideas. The first is we are following Christ's example. The first point is to follow Christ's example. Uh, it's written in St. Peter, <coughs> the first letter, chapter 2, For this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. So you should follow his steps. So remind yourself by following steps of our Lord we may suffer we have to suffer little for others because he suffered for us okay. um, the first step in how to witness contact others socially it's very much related as I told you to the previous one but in, in another way the first step to witness the, the, the word of God first try to come in contact with Allah socially don't start religiously this is very important don't start in a direct Christian way with non-believers this is, will not help you and the very famous model here is the meeting of our Lord Jesus Christ with the Samaritan woman he started with the story of the well and the water I help me to drink uh, this kind of, of discussion and it ended by where to worship in this mountain or that one okay but the start was not religious um, it's written in Luke chapter 5 after these things he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax office and he said to him follow me so he left all rose up and followed him by the way you will know in the next few lectures that there is no one standard or one model for preaching someone will follow you, will follow you very easily and others will follow you after years you will find resistance from somebody and you will find uh, somebody much easier but in all cases you should start the contact you should open the discussion you should trigger the story of Christianity slowly um, it's written also in the same chapter that Jesus answered and said to them those who are well have no need for a physician you know uh, this lady Saint Matthew uh, invited our Lord to his home and he invited other tax collectors okay our Lord accepted the invitation although he is going to a very bad house very much well known that they are all thieves they are bad men but he went and he accepted the invitation and he spent time with them and he was talking to them and because of this Levi afterwards became one of his apostles so contact them sociably you can go to their houses you can visit them accept their invitation and in his home because of the Pharisees were saying that how come this Lord this Jesus Christ uh, go to such house he uh, stated that you know uh, those who are well have no need of a physician but those who are sick I have not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. So, by contact, by coming co in contact with others, we mean that you have to follow the model of our Lord Jesus Christ by breaking barriers. You know, you have to break the barrier to, to a step forward into their life. Um, you know, people matter to him our Lord Jesus Christ, he cared, he valued people and they felt this, 
they felt how much they are valuable for him and that's why they opened the story, the discussion with him and they started accepting his words so the first rule, the first step is contact other socially also it's written in John chapter 4, the story of Samaritan therefore when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John though Jesus himself did not baptize but his disciples it's also another point here by the way that John cared much for the baptism in the first few steps ignore this at all don't consider baptism from the start don't look for this just deliver the message who is Christ? what did Christ do? why Christianity is good? what's the new life you deliver for them? this is the message if he accepted the message after few discussions or after few meetings he may ask how can I be a Christian? I wish to be a Christian so at that time you can answer back by saying the Baptist he left Judea and departed again to Galilee but he needed to go through Samaria, Samaria so he came to a city of Samaria which is called Sichar near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Judas now Jacob's well was there Judas therefore being weird worried sorry, from his journey sat thus by the well it was about the sixth hour it's like 12 o'clock at noon time a woman of Samaria came to draw water Jesus said to her give me a drink ok imagine anyone sitting beside you in any journey and he is not a believer and you started talking to him you can ask him to help you in anything and by this start by the sociable one by talking few words not on any religious matter you can start getting into uh, the important points second point in how to witness okay establish a common ground um, what we call bridge building you know the Samaritan woman answered back how come you ask me to give you water and you are Jew and am I uh, I am a Samaritan woman and you know St. John said at that time to just to, to, to tell us that at that time Jews never deal with Sam Samaritan he answered back if you know uh, the gifts of God if you know who is talking to you you may you yourself ask him back to give you water so he, he started talking about the water and the need of water he she uh, she said that are you better than uh, our forefather Jacob who gave us this well so this is a common ground that the forefather uh, Jacob is well known to both partners you know Jacob the son of Isaac the son of Abraham is very much known to both um, this kind of man, this kind of knowledge is well known by both our Lord and the Samaritan so this is the common ground, you understand what I mean? you speak with the guy on something uh, relevant to both of you the outcome will be better communication so our first goal in preaching to um, set better communication to communicate uh, in a better way to come closer to that guy inside his thinking or life so it's needed to hear them show that you care people are not just a project to you don't think uh, in preaching that this is my target today I will attack him I will give him the word of God I will present him our Lord Jesus Christ today he will receive the message no, no you may spend few meetings just talking in a matter of communication 
and you never touch the subject of our Lord Jesus Christ yet. You understand? So you have to pave your way to the to the serious subject. Don't rush. Uh, to establish a common ground, you should be what we call an active listener. People like to talk. People do not like to listen. But people like those who listen to them. Understand? So you should be, first of all, a good listener. When, when coming as a good listener, uh, th this guy likes to speak about his children, about his work, about his uh, dreams, about his uh, problem with his wife. Okay, just listen. And, and be uh, a good listener. Show him your, your concentration, your focusing on what he's saying. So he will uh, enjoy speaking to you. After some time, you can put the, the subjects you need. I read a story on communication that wa there was some, uh, some old woman, she was living alone in her home, she was very rich. And one of those who wa were working in marketing uh, some kind of, uh, of uh, polish or soap or whatever, um, he knocked the door and he tried to uh, ma sell the, 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 the things he had, but he was very intelligent. So, by opening the door, he told her, Wow, what a beautiful house. So the old woman said, Why don't you come in? Okay. She was not ready to open. But because of this start, uh, he came in. And she started to show him all the rooms. And in each room he was commenting. Very good comment. And he was asking as if he is very much interested. From where you get this one? I think this is very expensive. By two hours visiting the, ho the house, she gave him her Cadillac. Her car, it was very expensive, and she stopped using the car, and she told him, it's my first time to speak for two hours 30 years ago. Uh, since 30 years. You understand? He, he uh, took her into, her into his side by just a good communication. You understand what I mean? So start bridging with, the, with those you are trying to get into faith. Uh, they say, the preachers, the, the common ones, they say, use sensitivity mixed with grace. Sensitivity means you should uh, be sensitive to what people uh, care of or fear of or think of. You, see, you, are, you should be sensitive one, smart one. And you are always praying so the grace will open the door for you. It's kind of a gift from God. You cannot open the doors of the heart by your hands. You can never do it. But these doors are opened with the grace of God. So be sensitive to what they say and what they feel and what they need. And also uh, pray good to get the grace of God. By establishing a common ground, also uh, as our Lord did with the Samaritan woman, Jesus was a lifestyle evangelism personified. By talking to her, he demolished the social, religious, and racial, political barriers. What did this mean? You know, our Lord Jesus Christ was considered at that time as a teacher, which is something, and Jew, and man. So being a man is much better than a woman at that time. Being Jew is much different and higher than Samaritan. And being a teacher is much, much higher than a bad, sinful Samaritan. But he broke all the barriers and he started talking to her. So he forgot that he is the teacher and the good and the Jew and the man and he broke everything and he started the discussion. That's why she accepted talking back to him because it's very different from 
whatever she used to. Uh, Jesus approached her by making a request. This is a kind of approach, you know, you can ask him to help. You can ask him some information. You can uh, ask him to, uh, uh, to do you a favor. So, and if he's a good guy, he will answer back and this is the start, the approach. Jesus made her anxious to listen. After few sentences, if you follow the, the chapter, you will find our Lord Jesus Christ started by asking, but few minutes after, she asked him back, how can you? Why don't you give me the water you are talking about? So now she started to ask. And wha- that comes to the point uh, Jesus uh, was aiming at. Why don't you bring your husband? And this comes to the way to repent. So he told her what he knew about her. And um, Also, any friendship must be a two-way street of mutual give and take. So, you are not a preacher like giving a, 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 a sermon like this, no, no, you are give and take friendship relation with anybody who you want to bring to our Lord. So, help, listen, love, uh, think, share, and then after you can start delivering the message. With the Pharisees, he said to them, whose image and inscription in this? You remember when they came asking him, uh, do we uh, pay uh, for the the city or we don't? He asked them to bring him like a coin, you understand? And then he asked them, whose image and inscription in this? So this is the kind of communication to give, to deliver the message. With the rich ruler, so Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? So, I'm giving an example of how our Lord asked people to introduce his message uh, step by step. So you can ask and then they ask back and so the communication starts. No one is good but one, so this is the start, the way the rich ruler began to know God better. Also on this point, our Lord Jesus Christ was a skillful professor at asking effective questions. He drew people out with questions and listened to their answers. Remember when our Lord Jesus Christ asked his disciples, what people say about me? He knows, he he knew what they were talking about and what they were saying about him. But he was asking, so he get the information out of the disciples, and then he filtered the information. He gave the message, the one, the true one. So this is the kind, you know the answer, but you have to ask some questions, even if you know the answer. But just listen. Uh, He gently gave them his message. The third point, so the first point was, uh, contact others, the second was, Uh, establish a common ground. The third point, arouse interest. This is very clear in the story of the Samaritan. I'll show you in the in the paragraph. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Now, there is two very interesting point she does not know what is the gift of God and who is this man and another point what is the living water understand how could he arouse her interest who are you you are speaking as if you are a great man who are you and what kind of water you are speaking about and what kind of gift you are saying understand if you knew the gift of God, what kind of gift? And who says to you, give me a drink? And he would have given you living water. So the woman was aroused. Yes, so saying, sir, you have nothing to draw with. And the well is deep. Where then do you get the living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? 
also if the guy in front of you is a bit tough like this Samaritan woman be gentle and endure this kind of people she was tough, she was harsh she was mocking him who are you? are you better than you understand the way? but he was very humble he listened carefully he completed the, the story and the discussion uh, are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock Jesus answered and said to her whoever drinks of this water will thirst again so the, the message was interesting you understand he was uh, interested to, interesting to her but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life I think she was looking at him as if I don't understand anything but she was interested to know understand? because what kind of everlasting life you are speaking about what springing up, what fountain of water so he, he insisted to say something interesting to arouse her interest the woman said to him, sir, give me this water that I may not first not come here to drink so the woman's curiosity kindled so this is a good point in, in conversation with, with any non-believer that you are trying to arouse his interest or kindle his curiosity small things can open doors for a verbal witness uh, let's um, give some examples if you are flying with somebody sitting beside you in the plane and he's, he was a bit anxious he had some kind of phobia um, and you can tell him don't worry everything will be fine I never fear flying um, can you like, why? you can say actually I trust God he is always carrying me in his hands I believe so this is a start maybe it's a quick one but if it's a just a start because it's a point in discussion uh, small things can open doors for a verbal witness example a good family discussion about the family in the Bible uh, maybe the guy is speaking about a problem with his wife or with his kids uh, ok do you have some answers from the Bible? Do you have some examples, good ones from the Bible? You can tell him, okay, I, I remember a story from the Bible because I believe in the Bible, by the way. And the story is saying that, and you started the story. Understand? Because it touched him, because he has a problem in his family. So it's interesting to him to know what kind of family you are going to speak about. Um, the first point get the ball rolling try not to speak to stop the discussion don't put a, a quick end to the discussion you know the discussion with the Samaritan woman took like 40 verses in the chapter I always um, um, when praying the fourth Sunday in the Lent in the big fast we know the Samaritan gospel, the Samaritan gospel will take much time in the mass because you know it takes like 10 minutes just reading this gospel today, it's in that day because the discussion was very long you understand? so our Lord tried not to close the discussion easily he kept the whole rolling so this is my open questions and you know arousing interest and uh, 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 directing the discussion in the way he likes this is a smart um, way of communication and a smart way of preaching Jesus answered and said to her if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you give me a drink you would have asked him and he would have given you living water and the woman said to him sir you have nothing to draw ok understand the ball kept rolling 
ask a leading question. Are you interested in any spiritual things? This is kind of middle question, you know. After the start, you may ask the guy, are you interested in the spiritual matters? Actually, it, it helps me to live happier life. So, and in this point I want to mention that it's not wrong to speak about yourself few words because people believe in the personal experience so it's not a sin to speak don't say I do miracles no? but just you can say that I believe in God and it differs a lot for me it affects my attitude and uh, it helps me to think better I enjoy life more with praying so it works yes it always works when you speak about yourself few words what do you think a real Christian is? this is kind of question you can ask the guy whoever the person would you like to become a real Christian? this is a late question you know, you know this is not a, a start usually this is a late question in the discussion the long discussion I, when you getting the ball rolling plan ahead for the answers or remarks this is the smartest way that you um, plan ahead you think previously that with this question what kind of answer I will receive and accordingly what kind of question I can ask after you understand as if you are putting the plan of the discussion you are directing the guy into the way you like you want to speak about Jesus Christ how would you go to this point they still he can get you down and you can take him again up and he puts you down into another story and you try to put him up again to the point you need you understand it's a smart game but with praying with focusing on the point you want to reach you can make it you want to spell the word of Jesus Christ with the end of the story so you want to reach the, the game final um, be alert for opportunities to share about our spiritual experiences be alert for opportunities to share um, when you know you will meet many people who will if they love you if they like you they may tell you some um, negative um, experiences in their life they lost somebody uh, intimate they, uh, the guy lost his job the guy lost his fortune so at that time if you have any similar experience and definitely your Lord helped you much to get out of this this affects them very much when you speak to somebody saying me too I lost somebody important at that time I was very much down but with praying I could make it I could live again I could enjoy my life again and it really helped me a lot this is kind of very touching message because you are you had the same experience so common ground and also you know the the negative experiences sometimes are more affecting than the positive if they become your friend they will confide in you their burdens, longings, aspirations frustrations, emptiness so they will tell you what's inside this is time to put Jesus in when they try, they start uh, ventilating everything you know when they love you they will tell you whatever goes inside so this is the best time to put the Bible in or our Lord in also in getting the ball rolling um, if you are speaking with a teen teenager um, you have to have the teen interest the love stories, the relations with friends the, the dreams of the future you have to know their interest and 
enjoy discussing matters they care of. If you are talking about with young couples interest, you can, if you are an older one, you can give them some of your experiences in upbringing your kids and how your kids give you very hard time at a time and how could you make it with them they will listen carefully because you are giving them very nice information and with some Christian values and then with some biblical verses and then with the presence of your Lord in your life you can add the spices you need on this uh, also when you are talking with family's interest the older uh, couples uh, their team problems, sickness, financial problems all this you can tackle with your experiences with the um, biblical background, background the result of these four steps is a wide opportunity to share experiences and talk about religion also bring up the need for God through their interest stimulate the conversation on spiritual matters they are pushing to, to hold the spiritual matter into conversation common issues like the present world incident you remember that when the disciples came to our Lord Jesus Christ saying did you hear our Lord with the 18 guy were uh, buried under the tower who fall down on them and with those who uh, I think Bilat had killed and uh, mixed their blood with the blood of the sacrifices our Lord answered you remember his answer do you think these people are much worse than any of anybody else in Jerusalem do you think that these people were bad people this is what his comment it's like an accident everybody is speaking about this incident it's a, an accident very famous one but what is the comment because many believe that this happens with the bad guys but our Lord said wait a minute I don't think they, are, they were bad maybe they were good but I think that anybody who did not repent yet he should think again because with no repentance no salvation be ready it's kind of be ready so this is a spiritual message out of an incident or an accident so this is the, the art of discussing or conversation of, of a preacher uh, don't worry start and the Holy Spirit will lead you to the interested people so again the main point is contact people around establish a common ground uh, arouse interest get the ball rolling and now don't go too far this is very important don't go too far means don't try to convince somebody in half an hour period to be a saint or a Christian wait a minute wait a minute it's a long story don't go too far don't be an intruder don't get deeper into something um, very special for him because he may close with you he, he may uh, um, stay away from you because you touched uh, some, like wounds in him in his uh, so uh, very personal so don't go too far don't put all everything in the first sitting don't say all words you want to say from the start just little by little bring up the need for God through their interest stimulate the conversation on spiritual matters don't condemn people condemnation means judging others don't point at their sins this is not a good start in preaching don't tell anybody this is wrong nothing wrong in their mind so this is a negative attitude this is big failure in preaching never ever point at their mistakes or sins from the start time will come 
when you will put them into repentance and you will tell them I don't think that anybody can enjoy his life with God with sinful life I don't think sin, sin um, goes with light I don't think dark goes with light I don't think you can enjoy both spiritual life and very earthly life so you can say, put it like this I don't believe, I don't think you can do it Understand? I'm not saying you are a bad man, you are a sinful person, no. no. I'm just saying that I don't think it goes this way. You can never be happy this way. I think so. I don't think when you hate anybody, you can enjoy life anymore. But by loving others, I think you can enjoy your life. Um, don't condemn people. Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water, will first again I want to remind you that our Lord Jesus Christ knew very much that this woman was living a very sinful life and the man with her is number six in her life and she is living with him with no marital relation with the traditions of the Jews so she was living a sinful life but he never pointed at this part. He never focused on this. He was talking to her very respectfully. She felt he respects her as if he knew nothing. And suddenly he clarified that he knew, knew everything. But still he respects her. Yes, and by saying lady, you understand? So, so she uh, adored him. She admired him. How could you respect me after such knowledge? How could you respect me and you know everything? I don't believe it. Okay? So this is the, the message. Never ever condemn people while preaching. You will take them to hate sins after few meetings. You will take them to love pure, better life, pure life but not from the start uh, whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water this is kind of talking like you know how how pure life is, is nice don't you think loving people is something great don't you think you can enjoy your life much more than this by giving not taking so you are giving him a better life idea it will take him up so he will think yeah that's nice how can I get, get this la better life we want him to ask this question how can I get this that's the question asked by the Samaritan how can I get this living water and the answer was please get your husband with you as if he was saying there was a point we should uncover uncover your history your sins let's uncover it with together with respect and love but let's uncover the history let's repent you understand? that's why he he mentioned her husband at that point when she started asking give me your water as if give me this better life I want to start this new life you should at that time at that point point at the sin you should leave your sin this is the message but you have to deliver the message in a very cautious respectful way don't go too far our Lord gave her the story gradually so she became interested and curious and ready for more than he identified himself to her as the long-awaited Messiah. You know, with the end of the story with the Samaritan, she, she was admiring all what he said, so she told him, we are waiting for a Messiah. As if she was saying, he will never be better than you. I don't think he will be better than you. So he answered back easily, yes, it's me. So she caught the message by herself 
he directed her to to find out what what was he. You understand? So you directed the discussion. So he will spell it out that now Christ is God. New life is better. I wish to uh, to be a Christian. You understand? This is the kind of directing others. They will start looking up to you. I wish to be like you. I wish to enjoy your life like you. I wish to know your God. Jesus Christ also did not condemn the woman caught in adultery. Any other stories, the same attitude of our Lord. Sin separates from God and is destructive. Jesus Christ knows the human need for help and forgiveness. If sin separates anybody from God, when you condemn anybody being sinful, you separate yourself from him. You understand? When you judge anybody, you separate yourself from him. So if sin separates man from God, also judging sin for us separates us from anybody. So never ever touch this point. Just uncover this kind of sin lightly with love and with the forgiveness of the Lord in your hand as a gift to this God. Don't go too far, also be genuine. Don't rush saying, I'm not get another chance, I may not get another chance. Don't think this way. You know, we were saying in the previous lecture that you may read what others labored before. Understand? Okay, so you don't rush. It might not be the end of the story. You just put the seed. Others may water the seed. And others, after many years, may reap the harvest. Understand? So don't rush. You don't expect all the results from the same sitting. Uh, rely on the Holy Spirit and you can pray for this guy. I still pray for the guy I met many years ago within the plane because I couldn't win the game with him. But he at last uh, was a loving character and he said, uh, beside this point of, uh, of you believers can push the burden on others' shoulders, also the afterlife point, I think I want him, because the afterlife had, has no explanation for him. He couldn't answer, what, what do you expect after this? He couldn't answer this question. He, he was saying, we always escape from this idea. We do not know, so we do not care. So I smiled, looking at him, do you really believe in what you say? You do not care? Where, where would you go after? Isn't important to know? Don't you think it's, a, it's an important subject to think of? We are going with the plane to uh, New York. How about life? After life, where we are going to? Millions of years after. If you think there would be some afterlife. You understand? So it's a point. And they don't usually have a good answer for such points. Take care, be moderate. Don't push, don't rush, and be moderate. Just step by step, put little by little, and you can convince more and more by this way. And also, when saying don't go too far with a non-Christian, start by the basic things you can agree on and build on it. Ask about what do they think God is like. I will finish soon in a few minutes. Ask about what do they think God is like. When getting deeper in the conversation, uh, as far as you are speaking with a non-believer, why don't you ask him, what kind of God do you think God uh, is looking like? So, just explore what's inside him. How, how would he see God? If this kind of God. You can find some believe in nature as God. Believe in man as God. Believe that there is no God. Okay. Just listen and accept whatever he says. Respect whatever he says. Answer back with, with your beliefs. And uh, 
gives him some logic in what you believe in. Don't be a know-it-all person. This is very important. Don't show yourself, present yourself as if you are the perfect, knowledgeable one ever seen. I know it all. Understand? No, I don't know it all. People do not like those who uh, say that I know it. You know, I don't know it. I don't, nobody knows everything. So don't speak in a way that makes others reject your way. The know-it-all yeah, the know it all person is not usually accepted by others. There are two groups, groups of non-believers people who know about Jesus but do not respond and people who lack information and do not know how to become Christian. When you speak with somebody like Chinese, maybe he, this is the first time he um, listened to the name of Jesus Christ and he may ask you, just give me some more information about that Lord, that Jesus Christ. I know nothing about him. But when you go to Europe, America, the name of Jesus Christ is very well known. They do not know Him as Lord, they do not believe in Him, but they know the name and they believe that this was God of the kids uh, 50 years ago, but they know Him. So you have to uh, differentiate between the two groups. Does He know anything about Jesus Christ or He know nothing? This is different in the approach, in the attitude. If he know nothing, you can give him information. You can tell him, as we believe, Christians believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord of everything who became man to introduce himself to people. And he, um, he uh, gave us salvation by redemption. He died for us. And he ascended to heaven to uh, prepare the afterlife so you can put it in like two sentences just summarize the story and I see it logic because I need to see God if he, there is God I need to see him so he came to me I can go to him he came to me and I have a real problem which we call death he conquered this problem he solved this problem by his death because he ascended, he uh, raised from death and he ascended to heaven and he promised me to go through the same way. So by telling this, you just give him some, more, some new information. But for Christians, non-believers, Christians, this kind of information is very much known, very well known, but they do not respond, you understand? They do not care. So this is another story. You, much more difficult, but you know, it has many other uh, approaches. We will discuss it later. So both need your friendship, love, patience, follow up. Both parties, both groups, either know or do not know Jesus Christ, both need love, patience and follow up. Just go slowly and let the Holy Spirit lead. Six point, stick with the main issue. Okay, the Samaritan woman asked our Lord Jesus Christ about worshipping in this mountain or on that mountain. Wait a minute, she is taking him away from the main issue. Because she is ignorant, she does not know what to say. So she just wants to ask a spiritual question. If he goes with her in this direction, he will step away from the main issue. Jesus and salvation, understand? So, our Lord did not go with her this mountain or that mountain. He, he took her back into the main issue. Look, God, our Father, respond to those who worship Him from their heart, by the Spirit, wherever, anyway. So, back to the God issue and the main relation and the salvation. No deviations. No getting out of the main issue. Understand the point? Stick with the main issue. The woman, the woman asked where she should worship, but Jesus steered the discussion from where to how. From where, where will take you out. 
but how it will uh, um, put more light on the main issue common question to the vet which church should I join don't go this way if he asks such a question this kind of, of distraction no need for such kind protestant or le catholic or le orthodox come on he is a non-believer wait a minute don't go this way don't go to, to, clarif to clarify the churches and which is wrong and which is right and he does not believe in God wait a minute stick to the main issue stick to the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ um, there are hypocrites in the church don't go and say yes I know many in the church who are hypocrites and I hate them and come on where are you going forget this although there are many hypocrites in the church but still we are delivering the message of Jesus Christ not pastor fulan wa allan understand just take him back to the main issue think of it but stick to the main issue there are errors in the bible don't go this way just you can say I don't see any error in the bible you can read the bible and see if there are many errors but I have read many books that solve the problems of the bible but I never find with look those who are saying there are errors in the Bible never read the Bible you understand so it's easy to tell him just go and read it if you find the errors so you are strong now by saying just go and read it why you say there are errors they say so but I never saw it confront the person directly Lastly, with these steps, you can confront him directly by saying, um, uh, Our Lord Jesus Christ, with the end of the discussion with the Samaritan woman, he told her, I, who speaks to you, am he. I am. I am he. I am the Lord. Okay? So, with the end of the discussion, you should confront the person with the truth I believe Jesus Christ is God and Savior this is the, the end of the story I believe so I can't live without him I don't see any uh, kind of life without him I don't imagine afterlife without him I believe in him as King and Savior so I joined his kingdom of heaven I wish you joined the same kingdom by believing in him. Understand what I mean? So I'm confronting him with the truth at last. Okay? With the, with the end of the discussion. You can continue, but this is the last step. Build a, a bridge, then confront directly. So now, revise a review the five principles to follow us and and ambassador of our Lord Jesus Christ contact others socially meet them, know them second, establish a common ground bridge building third, arouse their interest by life, work, explanation fourth, get the ball rolling fifth, don't go too far accept, com compliment, never condemn six point, stick with the main issue stay on the track seven, confront the person directly Christ will work in the lives of others through you. Glory to God. Amen. Any comments or discussions? I'm sorry for being late. I promise to finish earlier than this next time. But please uh, stick to the time. Starting next week, we will give you the link for the audio lectures and the presentation. Next week, we will give you the link on the site so you can uh, revise the lecture and the presentation homework again homework again Hebrews 11 actions of faith or faith in action by the way if you go, want to go deeper uh, into preaching uh, ideas I advise you this week to read Acts from chapter 13 to chapter 19 just reading just reading ok the homework in Hebrews 
الأعمال أعمال 13 ل 19 just to think how these apostles were preaching how they start preaching okay? just for you reading okay? and you should read uh, the English Bible اللهم اجعلنا مستحقين يقول بالشكر ابانا الذي في السماوات تتقدس اسمك لياتي ملكوتك تكن مشيئتك كما في السماء خذنا كفافنا اعطينا اليوم واغفر لنا ذنوبنا لا تدخلنا في تجربه لكن نجينا من الشرير امضوا بسلام سلام الرب يكون معكم